You see, the Quraysh are the custodians of Allah's house. So they're supposed to, and, and Ibrahim made dua to Allah that the people all over the world, their hearts should be softened towards this house. Okay? That the people, people's hearts should have this affinity towards Allah's house. And all believers know that they have that softness towards Allah's house. And if you've never been there, your heart desires to go there. You want to go to Had, you want to see Allah's house. But the people who are custodians of it should have the softest hearts. They should have the softest hearts. But the thing that makes your heart hard is worldly occupation. You're busy making a buck. You're busy trying to provide for your family, things like that. So you're pre- so busy in dunya, you don't have time for worshiping Allah and your hearts become hard. So Allah makes their life so easy, they don't have to do anything that the other tribes have to do. The other tribes barely survive. So if these people were a starving nation, then they would only be worried about food and protecting themselves and they wouldn't have, have any time to worship Allah properly. So Allah got rid of their other concerns and gave them economic prosperity. So their minds would not be occupied with that stuff. Now they can concentrate on worshiping Allah. You know, there are two kinds of people that have um, uh, that amass good wealth. People that have make good money and have good salary. You can do two things. Either if you have good salary, you can become even more engrossed in dunya. You have good money and you say, might as well go all out. Party, make, the, make my entire life a big party. right? And you're constantly looking to add more luxuries in your life. And make more money out of the money you already have. Or you could say, man, I'm doing well. There's food on the, on the table, there's a roof over my head, I'm doing well enough. So you know what I need to do? Now that my time is freed up from having to seek dunya, and Allah has provided me enough, I can take breaks and study Allah's deen and worship Him. And maybe take 10 days off and make i'tikaf in Ramadan. Because if I, even if I don't make that extra bonus money, there's still enough in the house. We're doing okay. So I can take some extra time out. I can do some extra worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one should do that more than the custodians of Allah's house is the essential argument. You know, this, this came to mind. I don't mean to knock on physicians or anything. So don't take this personally if you're a physician. But I have a physician who's a friend who works part-time. You know, he's got a couple of kids, he works part and he makes good money. He makes like a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year. Decent salary for a part-time physician, right? And so somebody asked him, why don't you work full-time, man? He goes, yeah, I could work full-time and make 600,000, 500,000, but I'm doing okay with 200,000. And I, I need the rest of the time to memorize Qur'an and to teach my kids and to spend time with them and to do things with them. So why should I, you know, what am I gonna make this money for? If I, well, Allah has given me enough and I can do other, better things with my time and spend my life in a more meaningful way, then why not? Allah didn't create me to make more money. You know, He created me for another purpose. So if I can survive doing less and do more meaningful things, why not? You know, what a beautiful answer. Because you know what I find? People who do make a lot of money, you know what ends up being sacrificed? The family. They don't get any time. You're too busy making the money. You're too busy going out and you know, get it, doing the overtime, and then sacrificing the vacation, and you're never, and you, by the time you come home, the kids are already asleep. But by, by, before you leave for work, they are, you know, they, they're not even, they, they haven't even woken up and you're gone, so you don't see them. And you see them on weekends, but you're too tired, because you've been working all week, so you don't get to play anything with them. Whenever they come to spend time with you, you say, go to your room, didn't I buy you enough toys already with all that money I made? So go, you spend time with those toys, right? And these kids are completely distanced from you. They don't have anything to do with you except your money. And by the time they get older, and they're independent, and then you have a little bit of time, you've retired, or you want to spend some time with them, and you say, talk to me son for a little bit, they say, I, I gotta go dad, I don't have time. You know what you did to them when they were little, they're doing to you when they get older, and you're shocked. And then you come to the Imam of the Masjid, brother, my son doesn't talk to me. I don't know what to do. My daughter doesn't, sp- doesn't even look at me. Every time I try to talk to them, they say, I'm on the phone, I'm busy, I can't talk right now. Well, you bought him the phone. <laughs> and you bought him the unlimited plan too, right? So. <laughs> So who, who are you blaming, right? But the idea that, that I'm trying to present, that third concept, is that Allah softened their hearts because they more than anyone else need to be economically concern-free so they can devote themselves to the worship of Allah's house and taking care of that house. That is why Allah gave them all of these luxuries. SubhanAllah. What an amazing concept. Now next time somebody enjoys good wealth, they should think about why is Allah giving me this wealth? And what am I, how am I using it? What am I doing with it? Subhanallah.